Hey, what's going on? In this box is the Rev 1 by Ride One Up. It's the hardtail model, and I'm super stoked to unbox and review it, so let's jump right into it. It's packed in here pretty good. Looks like we have some work to do to get it unboxed. Ride one up, you guys do not mess around when boxing up your bikes. This is the first time I've seen a metal plate for the front tire mount for shipping. I love that matte gray color. First things first, let's get the battery on the charger so we can take it for a test ride. So it looks like this box has everything we need to get rolling. It's got the tools, user manual, an affiliate link, nice. What the, a beanie? No way. That's rad. That was a total surprise. And everything else is nicely packed. This charger looks super nice. Got the tools, pedals, all the nuts and bolts that we need. Some grease even, keys. Got my beanie on. This is perfect for this nice chilly day here in Utah. But I'm gonna get the battery off so we can charge it and continue setting up the rest of the bike. I like this guard bar for the battery. That's pretty cool. All right, let's finish setting up the bike. I'm not gonna walk you through every step because looking in the manual, it looks like they already have a setup video. So I'm just gonna throw it into a hyperlapse and get this thing rolling. All right, so I got the Rev1 all set up. I just need to get some air in the tires and a full battery, and we're ready to go for a test ride. But first impressions, I do love like this slate looking gray here. They did a great job in protecting it in the shipping. I was super impressed with that. Uh, setup was pretty easy. I did refer to the manual on a few things. There's some spacers on the front tire that you have to be uh, aware of when mounting the front tire. But other than that, if you've set one of these up before, it's pretty similar but I can't wait to take this thing out. So to inflate these tires, I'm gonna be using my Hato Air Pump Pro. This is something I've reviewed on the channel before. If you're interested in this, I'll have a link for it in the description below. You can get a discount on it, and also purchasing through that link helps out the channel. Also, when I had the bike upside down, I had my handlebar jacks mounted on the handlebars, and what this does is it protects your components from getting scratched up on any cement or anything like that. So this is a must have for your uh, ride carry bag, and I'll have a link for that in the description as well. Again, purchasing these help out the channel, and thank you for considering them. So currently it's at three PSI. I'm just gonna crank, crank it to 30 and pump it up. With the battery all charged up, I am now out on the Rev 1 by Ride One Up, and I can tell you right away that the torque on this thing is awesome. Now that comes from the 52 volt controller and battery, so you're gonna get a little bit more of a bottom end torque, and in comparison to the Super 73, which is 48 volts, you can feel the difference. Now, unfortunately, I'm topping out right around 20 miles an hour. This bike can get unlocked. You have to contact support and sign a waiver. So I'm waiting for those instructions to unlock the bike. I thought that was kind of interesting, but it makes sense because that's for off-road, you know, off public road and trailway use only. So we're only gonna hit about 20 miles an hour on this thing. So yeah, let's talk about some of the specs. Again, this is the hardtail model. And with that, obviously you don't get rear suspension. You do get front suspension with uh, 100 millimeters of travel. And right now these roads are pretty rough because we're coming out of winter time. 
so there's potholes and cracks and stuff and the ride feels pretty comfortable I just went over a little loop there and I feel just fine and that's because this seat is nicely padded it's very firm um, but also gives you the padding that you need to compensate for no rear shocks but with the hardtail model you do get the 52 volts but you only get 15 amp hours now something to consider is they have a battery upgrade that you can mount right in the diamond of your bike and give you dual battery so you're going to get a little bit more range so of course that comes with some added cost if you were to get the the rear suspension model you get 20 amp hours which is similar to a super 73 battery but in this case we're only getting 15. i kind of compare everything to my s2 as that is there's another e-bike right there uh, it's finally a nice day so we're just out riding but I tend to compare a lot of these style of bikes to my Super 73 S2 because that was my first experience. That's still my main ride. So it's an easy comparison. A lot of people are familiar with the Super 73 as they're looking into this bike. But where this beats the Super 73 is in price. You can get this bike for under $2,000. In fact, I think it's going for $1,800 right now on their website. So I'll be sure to link that below for you to check out the Rev 1. Also you get the four piston hydraulic brakes with this bike and they've thrown them on a 203 millimeter rotor which a Super 73 is 180 and when they first launched this bike they had 180 on it I believe but now we're looking at a larger rotor for better stopping power. So you're braking on the Rev 1, even this hardtail model is comparable to that of the Super 73 R's and RX's uh, because those have the four piston hydraulic brakes. But yeah, they threw massive rotors on this bike. Everyone's out on their little personal electric vehicles right now. It's cool to see. Like I said, it's finally a warm day, and by warm I mean like 47 degrees. Definitely a lot warmer than my last ride. The display on the Rev 1 is nice. I like that it's center mounted. I've center mounted the display on my Super 73 S2 as well, but there's not really anything that you need to toggle on the display, so there's no need to be touching it. But it gives you a lot of information. Obviously, you got your uh, pedal assist numbers. You can go up to five your miles per hour, your odometer, your average speed, and how much battery you have left as well. You have a nice big headlight with two light settings, well, actually three, because you have a running light. And then with the headlight turned on, which you just turn that on by uh, tapping the power button. Then you got a high beam and a low beam. You also have an active brake light as well, so people behind you know that you're slowing down. And another nice feature about this bike is you have two metal fenders covering your four inch wide, 20 inch in diameter Kenda tires. So you don't have any plastic fenders on here. You have some nice metal, which again, for the price, you don't see that on many bikes like this. So yeah, I don't have it unlocked, obviously, but I'm still getting about 18, 16 miles an hour up this hill. Throw in a little pedal assist, that'll help. So I just noticed something on the display on the odometer, it gives you your trip distance and your total distance, and it kind of alternates between those two. Because I was looking and I was at four miles and then it dropped down to three. But I noticed it says four is the odometer, three is the trip. It'll be interesting to see what the full range on this is. I am a heavier rider. I'm about 5'10", and it fits comfortably. And this fits riders between 5'2", and 6'2", I believe. So me being an average height, it fits me pretty perfectly. I can see that the battery's already gone down one tick. But I've also gone five miles on this battery. So if I were to get 20 miles range out of this, I'd be pretty pleased. Being on throttle and not really relying on any sort of pedaling. I'm gonna see how it does up this deeper hill. Camera never does it justice, but this hill's pretty steep. And uh, I'm on throttle here, going nine, eight, 
I have to pedal pretty hard on my Super 73, so I can tell these 52 volts are really doing their job. Now with pedaling, you can really feel it doing work with the motor. Almost to the top of the hill now. Oh, but another feature that I wanted to point out is, it's kind of a hidden feature. If you tap this M on the control panel, over here on the left-hand side, it shows a USB sign on the display. And back underneath here is actually a hidden USB port. So you get a phone mount and charge your phone while you're riding. So that's super handy. This is a hill where you don't want the brakes to fail you. Yeah, the brakes just feel nice and sturdy. This whole bike feels nice and sturdy. I'm super impressed. One other thing I like about the Rev1 is that your wheels don't have spokes. It's solid metal uh, by Bafang. So you don't have to worry about your tires going out of true or breaking spokes, which I've done several times on my Super 73. So all in all, seriously, for the price, I don't know if you can beat this bike. You got 52 volts, so you got a lot of torque. You're under $2,000. You get four piston brakes. You have a nice display, nice tires, pretty comfortable ride. And it's really not that much more expensive to upgrade to the full suspension bike. I think it's another four or $500. So if you're in that range, I wouldn't hesitate to get the full suspension bike. Now, of course, I can't speak to it because I don't own it, but if this is the base, it can only be better than this. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the only downside to this bike is the 15 amp hour battery. And again, you can rectify that with a second battery. You, they have all sorts of accessories for this bike on their website. So you can throw on a second battery you can even throw on a cargo cage. Looks kind of cool. It fills in this whole blank space in the diamond area. And you can see how it mounts pretty easily on the bike. So I've gone seven miles, some of it downhill. The battery meter is only down one tick. So I'm not going to do a full range test in this video, but the range could at least get me to work. And back, got a one wheel going. What's up, man? So, <laughs> seen another e-bike, two e-skates, and uh, one wheel. It's a good day to be outside. But yeah, another thing I forgot to mention is the horn. It's got a pretty loud horn. Another thing you can do to make these hardtail bikes a little bit more comfortable of a riding experience is, you know, if they have these fat tires, you don't have to fill them up to capacity. Uh, I, I did put 30 PSI in these tires, which is the max limit on them, but I would probably bring them down to around 20. I just wanted to get them filled up all the way just in case the bead wasn't set or something. Uh, when you do that though, of course, it creates a little bit more drag on the tires, so you might not get as much range. Also, this bike is rated for 350 pounds max. I don't come close to that, but... Um, it does support heavier riders and I, again uh, it being a 52 volt controller um, you might find that to be a little bit better than uh, the 48 volt e-bikes all right i am getting a little chilly so time to head back and give you my final thoughts <laughs> so funny story i actually just bought one of those japanese mini trucks you'll see it make an appearance on the channel it's still being shipped over from japan though it's gonna be the perfect e-bike hauler. Okay, ride one up. You really outdid yourselves with the Rev1, even this hardtail. I can't believe what you get for the price. I mean, we're talking $1,800. You get four piston brakes, you get fully metal fenders, you get a headlight, a tail light, a working brake light. You also get, you know, your suspension up front. And the thing that I can't get over the most is that 52 volts. I've ridden a lot of 48 volt e-bikes out there and this one definitely makes up the difference. You get a lot of torque right off the line. It did just fine up inclines. It did struggle a little bit on steeper hills, but that was to be expected. I was really putting it to its limits. You got a nice display, you got a horn, you got high beam, low beam, headlight. I am raving about this bike. 
I really don't have any complaints other than I wish the battery was a little bit bigger. But if that's gonna be an issue for you, maybe consider the full suspension bike because you do get five extra amp hours, which is comparable to the Super 73s. I guess the only other downside is the 20 mile an hour governor because you can feel that it has the potential to go faster, but I get it, compliance. So maybe I'll do another video on this that's more of a range test, plus hopefully I'll have it unlocked by then and we can talk more about that. So I uh, look forward to more content around the Rev 1 because this is gonna be a fun bike to ride, especially for the summer. I'm not just saying things, I came into this review not expecting much because I know what a sub $2,000 bike feels like and this isn't it. Now, Ride One Up did send me this bike to review, but they gave me no guidelines on what to say. They just said, reach out if you have any questions during the review. I don't have any questions. This thing felt pretty flawless. So thank you Ride One Up for sending me the Rev 1 and also this beanie. I actually got a compliment from my wife for it, so thanks for that. If you're interested in checking out this bike, I'll be sure to link their website in the description below. They also have several other different models of bikes if you're not into the moped style bike, so be sure to check that out. If you like this video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Rev 1. Are your opinions different than mine? What do you think? I'm curious to find out. And of course, while you're down there, hit that subscribe button. Have a great rest of your day.